Hey there, my name's Neandra. I wanted to give some tips for playing Mercy on Storm Rising's Legendary difficulty, and I'm going to split this video into four categories. First of all, Staff. Obviously, your main focus is on healing. I recommend only using the pistol if you absolutely have to, like clearing enemies around a corpse. If it's just you and Winston left, the pistol may be preferred, since his range is much shorter than yours. As for who to prioritise with damage boost, it doesn't really matter since they're all good. Just remember, Winston's gun can hit multiple targets, which is especially useful against groups like the ones that smoke bomb in. Genji has no damage drop off and can hit long range, plus he has deflect, which is very strong against the snipers. And Tracer has a lot of spread, but is a beast at close range. She's also the most fragile, so if you're boosting her and she takes damage, the time it takes for you to heal her is minimal. With prioritising damage boost over healing, you want to be safe, but there are a few opportunities for it, almost always with Winston and usually when dealing with bunches of the weak enemy troopers. Another potential spot can be clearing up the last few enemies in an area before downtime. As soon as the game begins, whichever ally has pushed ahead the quickest, I will try to follow a damage boost to take out the first three initial enemies. Damage boost is also great against special enemies when they get in that weird stuck position. The thing with damage boost, and the pistol as well, is that this game mode does not have a time limit and taking things slowly is perfectly fine, so your additional damage is way less important than keeping allies stable. Okay, so let's move on to Resurrection. I'm going to refer to the game mode's method as Revivals and Mercy's ability as Reses to avoid confusion. So, when a player is downed, you have to get them back up within 40 seconds or else it's game over. Each time a player is downed, that 40 seconds is reset, and again, the game mode doesn't have a timer, so please do not rush. Every time a player is brought back by a revive, the next time they go down, the time needed to respawn them will be slightly increased. If a player is brought back by res, it will not increase. On my first few run attempts, if someone died in the beginning area or outside of a fight, I would revive them with the intention to save my res for an actual battle, until I learned about the respawn timer thing. We can't predict the future and know if we'll need res in 20 seconds, but take the respawn timers into consideration, especially if it's very early into the game. Although revives are slower, their line of sight rules are less strict. If someone dies next to a wall, you can revive them from the other side. In the warehouse, if someone dies below, you can res them from above if you crouch into it. Please take into consideration the amount of enemies near a corpse when you bring them back. Although you can probably dodge the damage fine during the res, I had plenty of moments where I'd bring back Tracer, only for her to immediately go down again, especially if enforcers are nearby. Okay, let's move on to positioning. Almost every loss is going to be down to someone dying out in the open, in a position that is not easy to revive, or a loss of momentum while specials are alive. For example, one ally is downed, you revive them, another is downed, and so on so on. Not gonna lie, 75% of the time it's gonna be the DPS's fault, but let's focus on the 25. Especially because Mercy is absolutely the glue that holds this team together. If Mercy dies, there's a good chance it's just over, but if things do look hopeful, move your camera around and consider relaying any important information back to the team, you know, like enemy locations. So for the most part, positioning in this game mode is just using corners and being able to hastily break line of sight when enemies are attacking you. When Mercy flies to someone, she can push herself forward by pressing jump and you have a bit of control over direction while doing this. This is very useful as you twist yourself behind props and walls while still keeping up with your mobile allies. Continuously moving in and out of cover can be great too, since Mercy's beam takes three seconds to break when she leaves line of sight. Also, remember that Mercy's health regeneration kicks in after a second of not taking damage. This makes it absolutely crucial to have some form of cover easily accessible, since it's the only healing you're going to get in story mode. Try to keep all allies in view, and if they're not, either flick your camera about to find them, or your eyes at the top left display where you can see health. Everyone on the team is very mobile, and it's easy to end up split, especially in the warehouse section. If you stay in the same position for more than a few seconds, make sure you're not being flanked. A sneaky enforcer can easily one-shot you if you let him get close enough. As the warehouse section opens up, you'll gain more areas to peek from, like here and here. For the heavy assault unit, I recommend the team play it slow and kite him down various corridors that the team can easily break line of sight with. During the final section, two heavy assault units will spawn and I heavily recommend the entire team fall back and lure them into the warehouse area. I don't have much advice for positioning in the actual final area because I just got demolished to be honest. Last of all, let's talk Valkyrie. The two main uses for Valkyrie in this game mode are chained healing when multiple allies are hurt and saving yourself or the team when someone messes up. 
Same positioning rules still apply though. If you're caught out in the open during Valkyrie with no fly path, special enemies will shoot you down very quick. Valkyrie has a few small perks that are super valuable in this game mode, and they are constant and immediate health regeneration, faster movement speed, and doubled guardian angel length. Doubled guardian angel length really comes into play during the warehouse section as you can fly from one side to another. Enemies will follow you, and it's possible, sometimes necessary, to lure them away from a corpse then get back to it with the extended flight. Constant and immediate health regeneration is great if you mess up. As I said, it's the only healing you get in this game mode. For the most part, you should be near cover enough that you can let normal health regeneration kick in, but this is still a great fallback if you're being like swarmed or something. And lastly, faster movement speed. The bug where Mercy moves faster while resing in Valkyrie still seems to be in the game, allowing for moderately risky reses. It's also great if your allies are playing from a cramped area like the warehouse corridors and you just want more control over positioning. If you don't have res yet, the faster movement speed and health regen during a revive can be really nice. Just make sure you don't go out of vertical range unless it's to dodge an enforcer shot or something. Valkyrie charges very fast and Mercy is the most important person on the team so don't be afraid to use it to save yourself or keep it ready until you need to save yourself, providing you don't need a mass heal. And that's all from me this week. Thank you so much for watching. I meant to get this video out a few days earlier, but I've been a little busy. Basically, I finished this video right after the workshop announcement was made, so I'm a little behind and we'll talk about that soon. Feel free to check out my Patreon and have a nice day.